much like your golden chanterelle or your yellow chanterelle, these have false gills. Kinda has a bad rep with mushrooms. A lot of folks look at it as a poisonous mushroom. It is the second day of fall. My favorite season for many reasons. One of which, wild edible mushrooms. We're gonna take a little hike. I'm in the Algoma region of Northern Ontario. We'll see what we can find for wild edible mushrooms and we'll have a look at some other mushrooms along the way. This is a jelly fungus and it is edible. It's commonly known as witch's butter. Not what I'm after today, but still cool to find. It's really interesting fungus. Slimy. Weird looking, weird looking jelly fungus. These are some form of bolete, I'm guessing. But they're not something I pay much attention to. Uh, they are edible. Most boletes are edible. I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, these could possibly be porcini. I am not sure. But they're definitely way past their prime. They'd be full of bugs. I can see a large Amanita muscaria right here. This is the variety Gasawi. Kind of has a bad rap with mushrooms. A lot of folks look at it as a poisonous mushroom. Really, it's not. It can make you sick used improperly. However, it has many, many medicinal properties. It's useful for helping out with things like depression, anxiety. Again, it has to be used properly. If you're going to use Amanita, do your research, perhaps consult with a physician, uh, maybe a naturopath, something like that, but do your research if you're going to use Amanitas.
this is far beyond its prime. But that is one huge bolete. Just show you the underside of it here. So this is really, really wormy. But you can see that rather than having gills, it's have pores. Interesting mushrooms, that's for sure. I believe these are in the Lactarius family. I'm not entirely sure, but they grow in abundance here. And I've always looked at them as false chanterelles, but there's a good chance they are edible. I see similar ones a lot of foraging groups, things like that. And so there's what it looks like. I mean, it does, it resembles a chanterelle. Hollow stem though, which is a little bit different. And the gills, really any part of it actually will uh, bleed out an orange, milky, latex-like substance when you damage them. So this is going to be one of my projects to ID this because if these are edible, there are just tons of them here. And that would be great. Great mushroom to add to my list of, my, my short list of edible mushrooms that I'm comfortable harvesting. Hiking. But that's what you do for the wild mushrooms. Ah. You can see how hard these things might be to spot when you're walking around and looking down because they just camouflage completely until you look at their undersides, which are yellow, hence the name Yellowfoot. here and more here but they're just starting to come out and more over here I'll have to scour this area and have a look around I suggest that when you're hiking around in the bush if you do manage to find uh, a little patch of the yellowfoot chanterelles just stop what you're doing and have a good look around because they typically do grow in groups little patches here and there uh, now I find these typically in two places directly beside the river growing right in moss but also growing amongst old dead birch trees that are on the ground not living birch trees but on the ground kind of like this little patch right here You can see these are basically growing right out of the rotting log here. And much like your golden chanterelle or your yellow chanterelle, these have false gills. And they also do have the same fruity apricot smell especially when you have a big bag full of them. They just smell absolutely delicious. And you can see all up along this dead birch tree, these tiny little chanterelles are growing. Many of these will still get quite a bit bigger, but this gives you an idea of patterns to look for if you manage to find some. They're just scattered everywhere in here. Amongst all this old dead birch, this was a massive birch tree that came down. Who knows how long ago it came down. There's some really nice ones there. Really nice size. These don't get as big as the other chanterelles, as I mentioned, but 
They are equally as tasty. that. Ooh, that one's oozing stuff too. Hopefully we find some more of those that are a little closer to edible. More old puffballs. I guess we're a little bit too late for most of these. Found a few little puffballs here, some of which have been eaten by slugs. But there are a couple that are worth harvesting, so. We will take those. With your puff balls, it's a good idea to slice them in half before cooking and eating them. The reason for that is that 
Some smaller mushrooms, before they fully developed, look like or resemble a puffball, but they are not. You can see a stem, and you can see gills in this example. This isn't the greatest example, but it's. I just want to show you what this could potentially look like if it is not a puffball. Another reason to do this is you want to make sure all your puffballs are in good shape. You don't want to be eating rotten puffballs like this one. You want the inside of your puffballs to be completely white like this. You can see there's no no cap, no gills, it's just solid white on the inside. I am by no means a mushroom foraging expert. There are a few varieties that I'm very comfortable with identifying and consuming. There are plenty of varieties out there that should not be touched. Do your research if you plan to explore the world of mushrooms, wild mushrooms, because there are some of these mushrooms out there you do not want to come in contact with. 